Um, uh, talking about Virgil, Off White full, full, full Winter Collection just um, showed recently, right before I got back in, I think earlier in the day. Um, everyone's in Paris now because of Par uh, Paris Menswear Fashion Week. It's probably the biggest event now, isn't it? Outside of like the standard uh, streetwear events, I think no one really goes to agenda that much. I don't really see that much coverage about it on social and on. Well, I don't really um, peruse social as much as everybody else, but I don't really see as much coverage of it on like hype piece and stuff. I see a lot more coverage of people like um, pro Paris Fashion Week and stuff like that. For the most part, um, that's when places like pages like Celebrity Vice kind of get most of their kind of content from um, the in, in in the ingoing and outgoing people that are in that scene. Um, yeah, and in general, you know, there's those those been heron Preston, the Virgils, these kind of people that are kind of, you know, they they sit on that line between, you know, fashion and streetwear. So they're kind of dragging people across to Paris and stuff. And the influx of new designers that are showing now in, in Paris, with especially when it comes to menswear. J.W. Anson debuted, uh, Celine, obviously, last season. There's a new energy coming involved um, with uh, Paris Fashion Week now, especially with Raph Simmons, who's now left Calvin Klein. He's going to be another onus for him to kind of really step up the level and crank it up like, so there's a really new, strong energy that's happening in um, in Paris at the moment, um, which I think a lot of these designs are really, you know, vibing off of. And of course, um, Off-White was showing, Off-White being Virgil's brand outside of uh, Louis Vuitton. And um, it's been a bit of a rocky time, I think, personally, from what I've seen of Virgil and stuff that he's done with Off-White. It's kind of slowly but surely started to get a bit better season in, season out in terms of just what it looks like. Um, it can sort of look a bit haphazard. Um, I think having had a quick glance at his collection, nothing's changed so much. And I think you'd have to kind of, I think I maybe got to a point with Virgil's collections where I kind of have to maybe think it might be on purpose the way it looks. You know, sometimes when people say it's not, it doesn't feel cohesive. It doesn't feel like there's a theme. It doesn't feel like um, it's a collection. It's more, it's more so like a, a, a collection of pieces of clothes. And that might, and that might be a good thing, right? Like uh, a collection. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It might, it feels like a runway full of a collection of pieces of clothes that can be worn in different outfits, which might lend itself to the buying habits of um, consumers nowadays, right? They're not necessarily buying full looks. They might just be buying you know the trainers the socks the belt the jeans right and then chain and then kind of flipping them in between other looks whether they be vintage or they be from other brands so that might tie into it but it just feels like he's never ever had a really cohesive collection regardless even when he's using the same materials right it always feels a bit haphazard all over the place and um Again, um, maybe again, that's the point. Maybe it's a, it's a canvas. It's like an experimental canvas for him to kind of do his thing on. Um, but we're going to kind of d dive in a bit deeper into the collection. First of all, I've got a video of some of the people that are in and around um, the show to kind of quickly check that I hadn't seen, actually, which is quite interesting. I think they might do this in collaboration with Now Fashion, which is cool as well. Again, showing, you know, outside of killing it on the kind of design front or in a kind of you know fashion output front maybe not design maybe people go oh he's not really a designer whatever you want to say but in terms of killing in an output front right in terms of how quickly he's able to ship product or get work out there another thing that he's really you know a master of again some people in the same similar sense like samuel ross and those guys is they're the master of self-promotion right who they're attaching their brand towards brand partnership media partnership getting the word out there the king of distribution and no no more is a better example of this video which is i think i'm tying with now fashion on facebook it looks like um looks like the guests arriving at the off-white show there's a particular place where they want them to take pictures and stuff so again it's all very well in tune um, the people that are walking on the show are coming to the um to do see the runway show are wearing off white you know it's just a standard procedure that they do but again just the, the, the level of detail and tension and again it's not this is an extra on top of it because um again i'm sure the show was streamed i'm sure he's going to do the um, documentary series that he always does with the collection where he has a photo he has a videographer just follow him around um i think in the run-up towards the collection being um shown on the runway and they kind of chop it up into a really lengthy compilation with no with no narration or nothing you just kind of hear them running around so it's, it's quite captivating it's a lot better it's weird to describe it because it sounds quite boring but when you watch it it's really really absorbing and you can't take your eyes off it it's something that you'd wish more brands would do i think they did something similar with the dior um documentary that raf simmons did a few months a few seasons ago or a few years ago and um, that was kind of in the same sort of vein but it's quite telling and it's quite inspiring to see the kind of the, the inner workings of what goes into making the collection and choosing the looks and styling and all these sort of pieces so these are things that again that are on top of the design which again which is some of the more design-led designs that some of the more artistic um or based designers out there who are all about the craft kind of bemoan people like virgil and say oh he's only where he is because of promotion and that's largely correct but i think if you're that talented as a designer, I think it's your responsibility to marry up with somebody or to partner up with somebody who can handle that media side because that's really important too. 
you can't just be really talented at making clothes and have the ability coming out of your ass and no one know that, um, what you do, what goes into it, a bit of your personality. You have to be able to do it. Even if you can't do it yourself, I think you have to be able to do that a little bit. And Virgil obviously has done that. So we're going to quickly watch this video and see who was um, at the show. I haven't actually watched this, actually. So this would be a quite interesting first reactions. So let's see. It's presented by Now Fashion. Get some sound on here. Oh, Playboy Kite has gone blonde. Interesting. Not really liking it too much. Looks a bit burnt, doesn't it? It's a bit fucked up. You got Takeshi there, Murakami. He's obviously one of one of Virgil's um, good friends and collaborators there. Um, I think that's the guy from the the store, right? Great, right? in Tokyo, I'm assuming. That's always around um, those guys as well during that time and day. Um, you got a boogie there. No, not a boogie. You got Octavia, <laughs> Octavian. Sorry, a boogie. It kind of doesn't look like a bit like a boogie, no? A little bit, or is it me? No, Octavian, um, recently named uh, Sound of the UK 2019, which I'm not too sure about as well. I'm a big fan of Octavian, but um, I'm not sure if you'd call him the Sound of the UK. Um, I don't know. I don't think I've heard one. I don't, I don't think outside of maybe call hipster parties, I'm sure I've heard his track played in the nightclub, um, which again isn't really an inflection of who the Sound of the 2019 is. It's not, you know, Sound of 2019 in nightclubs. But again, I don't, I don't think, I think the kids are listening to more drill than they're going to be listening to Octavian for the most part, especially the, the, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, let's continue. Perfect. One more? Yeah. That's cool, man. Oh, the boots are dead though, but I, I like his upper top. Nice. Octavian's out there doing his thing. I'm not sure who that guy is. Um, not sure, not sure, not sure. He's opening his mouth, showing something. Nice, he got grills. I'm not sure who that guy is. Oh, we've got Don C there. Don C, no Kanye again, which is interesting, right? All, all of Kanye's friends, but no Kanye. A Lily May. Um, rocking a rock, good, good. She looks good as well, as per usual. Always got nice outfits on. Always with a nice outfit, it's a lay, 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 lay. <laughs> um, I'm not sure that is. That's a model, I'm assuming, because she's smoking. That outfit's banging as well. I love that jacket. That was really cool in the collection. I think I might have saw that earlier. That was Heron Preston, isn't it? I'm pretty sure, right? Yeah, it's Heron Preston collection. That looks fucking banging. Uh, who else? Another model, right? No, that's Madison Bear, right? I think, right? It's a YouTuber. I'm sure somebody went off-white. Um... Not really a fan of the outfit personally, but you know, she's there looking pretty and stuff. So go, girl, go, go, go. She's even directing the photographers what to take pictures of. Fucking pro, innit? No, take the back. Good girl. She's telling them what to take pictures of. Smashing. They really like her, innit? She's still on the camera, Madison. <laughs> they really like this girl, but fair play, man. I like the off white and the Louis tie up as well. Well done. Yes, Looks good, Madison. Yeah. Perfect, Madison, yeah, that is Madison Bear. I'm sure, sure it was. Let her go, man. Jesus, enough. She's still there. Still here. Still here. Okay, and finally, let, let her go. Let her sit down. So all the guys are there, right? All, all Kanye's guys know Kanye. Shame, really, but hey. Um, Gunner, nice. Did great 2018, didn't he? Eh? Mr. Gunner had a big, big 2018. Guna! <laughs> and who's oh skept on them then, right? Yeah. All looking sad and shit. Nice. That looks good. Um yeah, so I guess the, the guests were there and they had fun. Now to the collection, because that's the most important part of it, isn't it? Let's see what the collection's saying. Da, 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 wrong way collection. Let's get up here and go through it. So Again, I haven't seen it in detail, but let's see if, if anything has kind of swayed or changed my opinion on kind of the overall look and the aesthetic of the of the show. Again, this is just my sweaty, Stratford, bubbly hat opinion, right? I'm no one to give any sort of insight on anyone's brand. Don't listen to me. Uh, listen to people that are actually doing shit on the outside. But um, if we were looking at it um, critically... I'd say just, again, it's just, I, I think it's just his aesthetic. We have to kind of get used to it. We just have to just, this, this, this is just what his clothes look like. Because it just always kind of looks a little bit misshapen. It, the proportions are a bit weird. Um, the shapes are not that interesting. Um, they're, they're boxy, but without the kind of, um, you know, finesse or the allure that you might get with an old school Margiela piece or something nowadays that Valenciaga or Vetemar might make or, or you know, an other myriad of brands. It's not that kind of sensuality towards it. It's all just a bit haphazard and just, you know, it just seems that someone just cut 
you know, imagine you just roll some cloth on the floor, you just cut out pieces and just like make it just doesn't feel like there's any there's any sort of like, you know I wouldn't say design, but aesthetics associated with it. It's all kind of, you know, it's not ergonomic. There we go. It's you know like ergonomic chairs that have got that thing where it kind of, you know, um it's perfect for the crease in the bottom of your back, right? It's got a little divot at the end so you can put your little bubble button. Like right? there's nothing there's not none there's none of that. It's all kind of just like I just see loads of clothes. That's why I see. I just see loads of fabric that can obviously be taken apart and worn different ways, but I just see clothes. I don't see anything else. But that's just me again, just talking from um, the initial reactions of what I've seen here, right? So um, that's that on the screen. Let's go to the next slide and continue on and see what I might like here. Um, good, decent messenger bag, I think, for the most part. I think most people might like that. I'm interested in these boots and shoes. I think they're going to do very, very well. Maybe kind of building on what we might have seen in previous collections, again, from what Balenciaga and Vetterman did with the kind of really high sock um, shoe um, heel that we saw a few seasons back. Then it goes to the Saint Laurent sparkly thing that um, that we saw a few people wearing. Um, and this might be in the same sort of vein, right? This sort of like statement boot that a lot of uh, brands are kind of doing. So this might be very popular. Um, and that's and this might go very well. Again, I just think it could have been a bit more done with the shirt maybe, you know, the, as a look overall, the kind of boots are just the only thing you kind of see there. Um, again, just my opinion, again, just maybe too much clothes again for that, for my liking. Um, styling choices on this look aren't that great either. You can hardly see anything for the most part. Um, quite utilitarian, uh, but the trainers look quite nice, I say for the most part. Um, this look here with the orange black and orange jacket is you know it's neither here or there might be some more detail up close there's a denim jacket on the inside that's covered by a tie on the inside just, there's a lot going so it's really busy which is what i say right and then you got something like this which is kind of fairly interesting right you got this you know um cowboy boots with this kind of uh futuristic tracksuit right it looks like kind of like an off you know you know like the wi-fi symbol is it Wi-Fi symbol? Is it Wi-Fi? What's the symbol? Is it on? I forgot what the symbol is, but it kind of looks similar to that on the belt. So there is some interesting things in it, but again, it's just it just looks like there's so much clothes there. Just a, just a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of fabric. Um, and then there is, and then there's some pieces here that really work well. Like this overcoat looks pretty interesting, right? Um, again, maybe the shape is not what you would probably want from that sort of piece. You might go to an acne and get something that looks a little bit better. And then you scroll down to the boots that look really interesting. And having have a perusal across Instagram, it looks like um, these are a collaboration with Phil Office London, who obviously is quite famous for wearing boots with a similar sort of look. Um, and they look really interesting. So a collaboration with Phil Office London that he's done and done with underneath Off-White, which again is uh, something that you can't really bemoan or begrudge um, uh, um, Virgil for, right? He's very key keen to kind of bring in his kind of circle of friends into his projects and kind of allow them the opportunity to kind of do their work or get their thing underneath his umbrella which is you know again something that's super commendable so for all the kind of disjointedness of the looks seeing something like this seeing some cool outwear pieces like this jacket looks quite interesting i think for the most part some of the bags look quite cool i'm sure the trainers will do very well for the people that like that kind of look there's some cool pieces involved, but it's just a little bit too haphazard for me. And it never seems to ever tie in. I always thought, in my opinion, I always thought, against my opinion, I always thought maybe Virgil wanted Off-White to be like undercover. Right? Undercover kind of doesn't really, you know, ascribe to any sort of like current trends. It kind of does his own little alien thing. What Junta Kashi does there is fucking incredible. He probably doesn't get the praise that he deserves. But it's very, con it's kind of conceptual, but in a really easily digestible way. Right, loads of their max, loads of their overcoats, loads of their jeans, loads of their boots could easily be uh, adopted into like you know the the wardrobe of most kids that buy the brands that they buy. Now I'm not too sure whether Undercover is not stocked in most places or whatever, but I don't see enough kids who probably should be wearing it that should, especially when you look at some of the all over print stuff they've done and some of the kind of photo print and faces stuff they've done. Other brands have kind of worked, and I think they just do it in a much better way. Um, so. Um, Especially that their what's the diffusion line? Is it Johnny Undercover? I think it's Johnny Undercover or John Undercover, something like that, right? Like they do really good one. I always thought Off White would be the same sort of thing where it can just it's just like a standalone thing. But even the looks themselves, they don't really seem to kind of flow anywhere, don't go anywhere. Um I don't know. I don't know. There's some good pieces involved in it, like some good pieces like that I wouldn't mind wearing. The trainers look quite nice. Some of these fleece tops don't look too shabby, but I don't know. I'm just not too sure where the disconnect is sometimes with the clothing that he puts together. Like I, I quite like this look. This look is quite interesting for me. Um, you've got here a massive scarf of a, a, a plaid. It looks might might be quilted. A plaid shirt. Um, 
with some jeans and the boots, right? Which look fairly decent for the most part. I quite like that look. Um, I'm quite fond of the, the suits again. There's a lot of, again, loads of these suits are back in. <sighs> fond of it, but there's some details in it I'm not really a fan of. The slits in the middle, the massive patch on the sleeve, not really liking the look of. And I think I might be put off on off white suits that moment. I saw Michael B. Jordan wearing one on the run on the catwalk. It kind of put me off forever. I don't think they kind of did him a good job um, um, styling that suit on his um, muscular body for the most part. It kind of did look a bit odd. Um, but yeah, there's some pieces in it that look okay. Um, I'm not, I, I'm kind of over the co-ed shows as well. If it's a menswear show, I just want to see men walking on the show, especially if there's no real interesting tie-in. I don't really get the point of it. Um Again, there's some interesting pieces involved, but for the most part, it's just not for me, I'd say, personally. Um, the, the suiting looks quite cool. I'd say the over, the coats look quite nice. Good accessories, good bags, as per usual. Um, do you need to keep showing this sort of logo on the web belt again on the runway? I'm not sure if you do need to show that anymore. You could probably take that off the look and it'll work just as well, right? You probably don't need to see that anymore. Um, might want to see more, something more interesting. Um, I quite like this belt here with a kind of uh, block print all over it. That looks quite nice. Um, I'm not really mad at this look here um, with the kind of cat suit with the boots and the football helmet. This helmet on this girl sort of like bending the other way, so I'm not just sure what that looks about. I love off offsets. Looks probably look offsets. Look probably looks the best of all of them. If they, we if we saw more of this in the collection, I think it would look really well. Like this purple pu puffer jacket looks insane. So long, what's that? Floor length purple puffer jacket, massive with ni nice wide pants, some good deals in between. Yeah, this looks really nice. I think the offset outfit is probably my favorite of the lot, I think, of all of them. Again, um, fairly decent, I'd say. Um, like, probably not my favorite off white collection. I'm not sure if I have a favorite. All in all, if I have a collection, I, I like pieces from the, the brand overall. I quite like the, the cowboy books, look quite nice. But I just want to see a little bit more from him. You'd hope so. And again, maybe it's the. Um, this jumper, this his knits are quite underrated, I think so. But to say that, I think there's a couple even in a Louis Vuitton show that didn't get the praise they deserve. But maybe this is the consequence again of being spread too thin. I don't think it is because I think again, I think he's a freak. I think uh, Virgil is a kind of you know the Cristiano Ronaldo, Lalo Messi of kind of the streetwear fashion game. I think he, if anyone can do it, he can. But it might be a consequence of being stretched a bit too thin, right? The collection doesn't really f feel cohesive. But then that being said, even before. He was stretched this thin. He still didn't feel that cohesive. Regardless, there's some nice pieces involved in it, but I think overall as a collection, it doesn't really hit the mark for me personally. Um, but again, offsets look quite nice. Um, Carti here as well. Play with Carti. This look, I'm okay with. Uh, I'd probably pass on that one. But I think offsets are probably the most interesting of them all, I'd say. Maybe the last couple. And here he is, the main man here at the end. So yeah, um, another successful show, I guess, for him. Maybe it's again, it's another, it's just, it's probably more important again just to see him on the runway for the kids coming up. And the fact that he's up, he's doing it at such a high level to really high, I'm, I'm assuming the turnover for Off-White must be fucking insane, right? For the clothes that he, man, the clothes that he puts out. Um, I'm not sure if any, I'm, I'm sure everything that we've shown, we, that shown to the runway makes it to the stores as well because, you know, the buyers probably lap it up because it's, you know, it's something that can sell quite easily. So he's operating on that high level with like two really important jobs on top of whatever he has to do, his own consultancy and um, DJing around the world. So I do commend him for that overall. So I think maybe there is a different way to kind of judge the work that he does. He's not just sitting in a studio designing collections like other designers are doing, which is, again, which is not saying that's easy, but I'd say there is probably a difference when you're like, you know, when you just, all you, conf all you have to focus on is the fashion, right? When you're JWN, so you have to maybe lend your hand to the business side. You don't have to launch doors. You're not having to curate um, playlists for Apple Music, right? You can just, maybe that's, Maybe you can operate in that level when you're just doing that. Maybe when you're the Virgil, you have some things have to kind of go by and by and you have to maybe do things more as a collective. You know, you're seeing him always with his design team, bigging him up and stuff and whatever. So maybe that's the reason why, because there's so many people involved in designing his collections that it kind of looks the way it does um, as opposed to other people's collections, which kind of come from more of a singular voice. But there we go. There we are. So Off-White for, for win the collection again. There may be some nice outerwear pieces overall. Off offsets, offsets look for me was probably my most favorite. But outside of that, nothing really to write home about, I'd say, overall. So I'm kind of eagerly anticipating the Louis Vuitton show that's coming up very soon.